Hello! This video will demonstrate how to find the limit of a function that is composed of two smaller functions. So we're going to be looking at compositions. So let's look at number 15. Right? Imagine I can, I can think of f of x, the main function, to be e to the x. Okay. Well, what's the input for this x? Well, that's another function negative 2 over x cubed. All right. So really, this is f of g of x. So let's look at how we can find the limit of this function in a very structured way as x approaches 0 from the right. What do I mean in a structured way? We've seen before that if I choose a number very close to 0 from the right, I could choose 10 to the negative 20th, right? That's a very small number. It's positive. I could put that into this function, and I could take a guess, and we'd probably get a good guess. But we don't always want to guess. We want to use what we know um, about limits to know exactly what happens. Okay, so watch how this works. It's actually uh, pretty cool. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the limit of g of x right, as x approaches 0 from the right. Okay, no problem. And again, a lot of common sense goes a long way, right? As, as x gets really, really, really small from the right, x cubed gets really, 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 really small. Well, you know that dividing by a really small number gives you a really big number. And because it's negative, our limit here is negative infinity. Okay? So once again, x cubed is really, really small. Anything divide by, well, I shouldn't say anything, but dividing by a really small number gives you a very large number. Why negative? Because we have negative 2. Now, this is what we're going to, sorry about that, this is what we're going to use for our limit of f of x. All right, let me look at this. Okay. All right. And again, hopefully, you know, you gotta, you got to know your graphs. I don't expect you to remember all of this. If you can remember, fantastic. If not, just draw a quick sketch. You don't have to be a great artist. When x is 0, this is 1, right? When x is positive, this just goes up. Right? And when x is negative, because we're concerned about what happens at negative infinity, remember, this can never be equal to 0, and this will never be negative, but it will approach 0. Okay? All right? And therefore, right, don't forget the therefore, ultimately what we're trying to find out is that the limit of e to the negative 2 over x cubed as x approaches 0 from the right is 0. Okay? So there's a lot of little things here. A lot, a lot of, uh, you've got to know your graphs. You have to know what happens with numbers, right? Dividing by a very huge number gives you 0. Dividing by a very, very, very small number gives you a huge number, right? In this case, we're dividing by a really small number because we're approaching 0, all right? And if we look at the graph of that, right? Again, you're not always going to have the graph, but if I look at the graph as we're coming from the right to 0, the function approaches 0. Remember, Obviously, let's go back to our flip chart, right? This is undefined at x0, but of course, a limit exists, all right? So let's look at another example, this one here, right? And so should I do a new page? I don't think we need that much space. We can do that, okay? All right, so 
I can think of this as my g of x, and I can think of this as my f of x. So let's look at the limit as we approach 0 from the right of x times the sine of x. And we've seen this before, no problem. X, excuse me, x is positive and it's really small. Right? So I can really think about this as the limit of x times the limit of the sine of x. All right, both of those limits exist. So remember, we can use our rules, no problem. Right? The limit of x as x approaches 0 from the right is 0. The limit of the sine of x as x approaches 0 from the right is also 0. So this is 0. We're going to use this for finding our limit of f of x. Okay? Which is the natural log of x. Hmm, okay, natural log. What does that look like, right? Okay, remember the log of 1 is 0. The log of numbers less than 1 are negative. The log of 0 is undefined. And if you remember this one, okay, the log of 1 is 0. The log of, let's say, the natural log of, you know, a big number. It's just going to you know, go like this. The log of numbers less than 1 and greater than 0 are going to be negative. So this is going to be negative infinity. Okay? So, again, notice the process here. I find the limit of g of x. I use that limit to find the limit of f of x. All right, and let's look at the graph of that, just just so you uh, so it makes sense, right? We're going to look at the natural log of x times the sine of x. All right, kind of a cool graph here. Um, we can see as we approach zero from the right, right, the graph goes down, 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 down to negative infinity. Okay, let's do a few more. All right, so again, we're going to look at the limit of x squared plus 1 over x minus 3 as x approaches infinity. Because the degree of the denominator is smaller than the degree of the numerator, we're going to find the slant asymptote. And then look at the limit of the slant asymptote as x goes to infinity. With some practice, you're going to realize that the slant asymptote here, I can just, you know, I can just do it real quick. Right? x squared plus 1. x goes into x squared x. As soon as I see this, I know that it's going to be a line with a positive slope. As x gets large, so will the line. So I know that that is going to be positive infinity. Okay? Again, You've got to use the use the uh, use your common sense here as well. Okay, so I'm going to use this here, and let's find the limit of the natural log of x as x approaches infinity. Okay, we just saw that in the last example. The function increases slowly but it still increases. And remember, infinity is a concept. It just keeps going and going and going. Therefore, this limit will also approach infinity. Now, the interesting thing about this, suppose you chose a very large number in your calculator, 10 to the 99th, or in this case, 10 to the 40th or 44th or something. Okay? And we put that in there. You'd find that when you look at this, you're not going to get a big, big number. I think you're, you're going to you might get I don't know 200 something. I don't know what it is. So this is why we need to know. We have to have a structured way to find these limits. 
all right, as opposed to just plugging in really large numbers or numbers close to the, the uh, number we are approaching because we're not always going to see what it really, really is. Okay, so be really thoughtful about that. All right, this is a nice structured way to figure that out. All right, let's look at this one. All right, so we are going to look at the limits for the negative tan x as x approaches pi over 2. Okay, notice this is not inverse tan, it's just the negation of tan of x. Okay, no problem. Well, let's think about that. All right, hopefully you remember your tan function. It kind of does this, right? And this is pi over 2. All right. So as I approach pi over 2, all right, this goes to positive infinity. We want to be a little thoughtful about that. Because as I approach pi over 2 from the right, I go to negative infinity. All right. So, so we have to be a little careful here, all right? So I, we, we, we need more space, so that's why I'm doing this, all right? So um, the limit as we approach pi over 2 from the right, the negative tan of x from the right is negative infinity. The limit of... Sorry, 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 sorry. The negative tan of x, all right, that would, so because this is, because it's negative tan, we have to be a little thoughtful about this. This is what I, what I'm erasing right now is just regular tan, right? Negative tan is going to be, I don't know if that will show up, will be like this, right? Okay. okay, so we can see as we're coming from the right to pi over 2, we're going to positive infinity. As we're coming from the left, right, I mean, <laughs> correct, <laughs> all right, as we're coming from the left, we're approaching negative infinity. Again, the limit as we approach pi over 2 doesn't exist, okay? We'll go one step further. I mean, my, in, my instinct is to say that this doesn't exist, all right? Let's see if we can bring that up a little bit, all right? But let's, let's keep going and uh, see what we get, okay? Well, let me see here. The limit as I approach infinity, right, we're going to use that for that, of e to the x, right, is positive infinity, right? This just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The limit of e to the x as x approaches negative infinity, we saw in an earlier example that this is zero. So therefore, these limits don't match, okay? So this does not <laughs> exist, okay? And it might be worthwhile looking at the graph of that. So we can see as we approach from the left of pi over 2 for our function, we're approaching 0, but as we approach from the right, it's positive infinity. They don't match. So ultimately, the limit doesn't exist. Okay, here are the last two examples. I want you to pause and really look at these. When we look at the inverse tan or inverse secant, you've got to know what these graphs look like. And we can see as I go to infinity, inverse tan approaches pi over 2. As I go to negative infinity, negative pi over 2. And similarly here. Okay? So you should commit these graphs to memory so you can sketch them out, so you can work with limits that involve the inverse tan cotangent secant cosecant. Well, thanks for watching.